So I'm at the airport. I just finished Essentials of EM. What an amazing conference. Such cool people there. Such great lectures. When I was there, I was reminded of a conversation that I had with Ben Smith and Mike Mallon at Castle Fest this year, and I wanted to finally share it with you guys. Now, this is going to be a little bit longer than the typical five minutes, but there was just so much good information there. I just couldn't take anything else out. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Mike Mallon, Ultrasound Podcast. Mm -hmm. We're at Castle Fest, but we're taking this opportunity to record something. So, what are we recording? Yeah, so one of the lectures that I did for Castle Fest was a right heart lecture. Mm -hmm. So, I remember initially learned about McConnell sign. I was like, oh, it's 100% specific. Yeah, McConnell sign always means PE. Then I read some literature uh, later, and it was like, no, it's not good. And then I reread it for this lecture, and it turns out that maybe in some situations it is good. You lost me. McConnell sign. Got it. Can it be used for a PE, yes or no? That is what I'm trying to figure out. Kinda. Well, how do you use it? Um, I mean, I think I use it like with my pretest probability, right? Like mm -hmm. if I think somebody's got a PE, they okay. look pretty sick, they're mm -hmm. tachycardic, maybe they're hypotensive, and they've got a McConnell sign with maybe even like a clinical story consistent with PE, then that's definitely increasing my post-test probability. Okay. I just don't know what, how much. Oh, Ben, you're here. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, when did, when did you get here? The third person so uh, the third person here is Ben Smith, uh, who runs ultrasoundoftheweek.com. He's got a couple of apps that he's generated. They're, they're great. Clip D identifier. It's already out. It's good to go. But there's a new thing called Sono GIF. Is That's that right? right? Uh -huh. Sono GIF that I just beta tested it, and it can create this amazing GIF off of any MP4. It's like one of the most powerful programs I it's have funny, on my computer. Because when I used it, it, it didn't work. Uh, no, he, he fixed it. Oh, it's already? already yeah, yeah, it's yeah, already been fixed. He's a programmer. Good. So, Ben, you were my residency, my ultrasound director in residency, and I remember having this discussion with you a lot, and I feel like we've gone back and forth. Where do you sit currently with McConnell's son? Well, Mike was talking about how if you had a higher pretest, higher pretest probability that it sort of pushed your likelihood ratio to say, yeah, this is probably PE. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the sick patient, the test performs well. And, it, okay. and if you have a really sick hypotensive patient, it also has a pretty decent negative rate to value. I mean, although it hasn't been studied, I, I think if a patient has a submassive or better PE, it's much more likely to have a blown RV and a McConnell sign. So if they've got a flat RV, RV is doing great, and it's flat, it's unlikely that they may have a small PE, but that PE is not what's causing the cardiovascular collapse. So, so you're using it specifically to find causes of cardiac, like, of, like arrest, basically, of, of like peri-arrest situations. Or, you're not using it for diagnosis. Hypotension. Hypotension. Yeah. Hypotension. Yeah. So shock your patients. Yeah. So you're yeah. not using it necessarily to diagnose. You're using it to almost like prognosticate your patient. With suspected PE? Well, I mean, it, it can help you, like, direct you a little bit, right? Like, okay. somebody comes in, one of your, one thing on your differential diagnosis is, mm -hmm. like, big PE causing hypotension tachycardia. Yeah. I mean, you know, I take a look at their heart. They got a big RV. They got a McConnell sign. Okay. Then I'm probably going to the CT scanner quicker as opposed sure. to continuing to look around for an alternative cause of their of their shock, right? Right. I yeah, mean, no, I think, that, that's so good. it just yeah. sort of like moves PE up on the differential diagnosis for me, right? right? Which yeah. I think is important, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I, obviously, if they're super sick and you can't get them to the CT scanner, then I'm, I'm, you know, getting more clinical history and thinking about the potential, you know, thrombolysis. Mm -hmm. I like that. So um, when I was doing the research for this uh, talk that I gave, um, it was interesting. Uh, because it kind of, the research seems to fit what you guys are talking about. And that is, if you have a patient in whom you have a high, a moderate to high pretest probability of a PE, and that patient does have a McConnell sign, it's got a pretty good specificity, actually, in that particular subset of patients, right? Yeah. But if you take all patients who have McConnell sign, there are, it's really not specific for a PE. Like, a McConnell sign can be present in any situation in which you have an acute right heart issue. So that can be uh, a PE, it can be an RBMI, and it can be uh, an exacerbation of uh, COP, like core pulmonary situation. Like all of those can also have McConnell sign. But if someone presents and they're obviously a COP, COPD exacerbation, like I don't know if I'm gonna be looking for McConnell sign, right? I mean, are you just like looking for it in everybody? No, I mean, I'm not even doing echoes in everybody who might have a PE. I mean, somebody who's hemodynamically stable, mm -hmm. you know, I may or may not do an echo in them. And I'm not okay. sure what that echo would really do for me anyway. Sure. You know, I'm, not di I'm not definitively diagnosing PE with, with echo, right? Okay. I mean, I, I, no, I, that makes sense. I can presumptively yeah. treat someone based on my echo, as, you know, as part of my as as part of the reason that I'm going to presumptively treat them. But mm -hmm. I feel like it just in general, echo in in PE has has gotten a really bad rap because it's not 
universally sensitive or specific. But I mean, it doesn't have to be, right? I mean, like as long as you use it in the right context, use it in the right patient population, and consider your pretest probability, then it can still be a helpful test, right? Real quick, do you guys use other things like, or like any um, RV, you know, the systolic excursion? Um, I like the TAPSI data. Tapsy? Yeah, okay. I like the TAPSI. Okay. The TAPSI data has been sort of compelling, like as a, you know, um, some sort of a predictor towards towards PE. Right? Okay. So if it's greater, like the greater than uh, one point seven or greater, then it's more likely to be PE or less. Or less, right? Yeah, one more time or less, right? Because yeah. it's less. Yeah. Um, so it'd be 1.6 or less, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I personally just use two. Yeah. Um, got it. You know, there's, I think, we're black, there's, it's not black and white, right? Right, I mean, right, right? But I think two is an easy number to remember. So less yeah. than two, there's some sort of RV dysfunction, I see. Um, which pushes me towards PE. The other one that's that's been, you know, fairly well studied and, mm -hmm. and has some data behind it is actually RV size. So really? TAPSI, RV size, the RV bigger than the LV, okay. right? Just subjectively yeah. bigger. You can actually do like a, you know, a right ventricular measurement, but just subjectively is the RV bigger than the LV? And it's not like one to one. It's not like bigger than the the point six to one. It's like greater than greater yeah, than greater, the LV. Greater, greater than, than LV. LV. Yeah, I mean okay. you're gonna have a higher you're gonna have a higher specificity if you use greater than the LV. I see. What about you, Ben? What what are you using besides McConnell sign, if anything else? So I like the TAPSI primarily actually to to prognosticate the patients who who I know have PEs. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna mm -hmm. sort of work backwards and say, is this patient like low risk or submassive? Mm -hmm. And so, like, if I see they've got a TAPSI that's, you know, 1.5 or a TAPSI that's 1.2 and everything else being equal, they may actually, that patient may need to go to the unit, just be watched to at the very okay. least. Like um, and certainly, not, not, they're not in a low risk category. Mm -hmm. I know in, in Canada, they're sending home low risk patients on, on these NOACs, uh, just or on the, or the oral anticoagulants, mm -hmm. but this is probably a submassive. Now, I'm using it within the clinical context. So, do they have an elevated troponin, an elevated mm -hmm. BNP, EKG? Right, you know, heart strain signs. It's just another piece of the puzzle. Gotcha. It's a data point. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Ben, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> I'm still oh here. My God, you're still here. I uh, really <laughs> said five words. Yeah, no, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for joining yeah. us. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, having you at Castle Fest this year and hearing your lecture. Uh, great stuff. Um, and go to ultrasoundoftheweek.com and check out all the tools he has there. Some really good tutorials too, if you want to learn some basics of Photoshop for um, specifically ultrasound editing. Check it out. I totally disagree. Oh my god. <laughs> Where did you come from? Oh my goodness. <laughs>